And what we do as physiologists, as, as you know, we say it doesn't matter if it's the carbohydrates coming from the muscle or from the bloodstream, the regulation is the same. And that's totally false. Mm. And it took me a long time to realize it. So what happens during exercise, your muscle glycogen drops down as a sort of linear function of the, the duration, which tells you largely that the exercise is regulating how much glycogen you are using, but it's going down. It's always going down. I did not know until six months ago that the glucose that's coming out of the liver into the bloodstream is now circulating to the muscles and it's getting used by the muscles. But the regulation is totally different. Why? Because blood glucose oxidation just goes up, increases. And that's paradoxical because you don't really want that to happen because the poor liver is becoming more and more depleted of glucose and glycogen. It's having more and more difficulty to produce glucose. And the muscles are saying, I don't care about you. I want that glucose. And ultimately, you will always reach the state where the muscle demands more glucose than the liver can provide, and your blood glucose will fall. Now, the brain's not so stupid that it says, okay, the blood glucose is falling. We must just continue until you die because the glucose in the bloodstream is crucial for all the brain function. And so the brain has a protective mechanism. And in all these studies, you can see as the glucose starts to drop, the power output of the athlete starts to drop as well, and they start to get the fatigue symptoms. But if you give them glucose, after 10 minutes, their glucose starts to rise, and they feel fantastic, and they can go on for a long time. What we've shown is that the blood glucose is, is crucial, and that the body will burn the glycogen, but it could burn fat for everything. So why doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the body just burn fat? And one of the keys that I observed was that in the studies where people are studied at rest, 50% of the energy is coming from carbohydrate. Now that does not make sense because this is the jet fuel that the body is trying to conserve. And that's why you're filling your mouth with carbs to provide the muscles with carbs and glycogen. And the body's wasting it mm -hmm. by burning it at rest. And when you're sleeping, why? And the answer is very simple. And it's provided by George Cahill, who, who wrote this in 1971. He gave one of the famous lectures in 1971. And he said the first rule in metabolism is that the body regulates the blood glucose concentration and keeps it within a narrow band. And, that, and everything's focused on that. And as soon as the glucose goes out of sync, the body responds dramatically to try and get it back into range. The one way you can get the glucose back into range very quickly is you dump the glucose somewhere and you dump it into the muscles. Hmm. And then the body is so clever that it says, okay, we've got too much glucose or glycogen in the muscles. I know you're going to go out and have another Coca-Cola and you're going to have some chips and bananas in three hours time. I've got to anticipate that. I've got to get rid of this glucose in the muscles so the next load that comes in, I can store it. And that's what's happening. The only reason you burn glucose is to regulate your blood glucose concentration. That's why you burn glucose. What happens in the body is that the muscles respond. And if they've got lots of glucose, they will burn glucose. They have to.